Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland. Today I'm going to show you a technique using an imported plaster from Italy called Grisello, a lime-based plaster using an embedded stencil technique. Let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. Grisello plaster. So the first thing we do is base coat the surface with the quartz primer. Quartz primer is into your exterior, cleans up with soap and water, and you tint it with pigment, never paint. Pigment is highly concentrated. It gets to the color quicker than paint. Paint will dilute the product, cause it to fail. So I rolled this one with a quarter inch nap roller. And the first thing we're gonna do to get ready for the Grisello finish is base coat with Marmorino plaster. Marmorino plaster, interior, exterior, lime based plaster from Italy. It comes in a tint base and you tint it to any color you imagine. And what we do though, so Mar Marmorino is also it's a standalone product you can do endless finishes with. But when we use Grisello, we use it as our base. And that just gives it a better base coat to work on. So uh, it, Marmorino is real simple. Interior, exterior, cleans up with soap and water. You tint it to any color with lime compatible tints. That's any kind of lime plaster, always lime compatible tints. If you don't, the lime can attack universal pigments of universal colorants or universal uh, pigments, color, same thing, sorry. Uh, it'll attack it and your colors are just gonna wash away. It could and it couldn't, that's, so you don't try to create a finish based on the things that could happen. You can't create your finishes knowing what you're working with and what, how they will happen. Uh, so we stay with lime compatible pigments, very simple. But right now, since I'm gonna do this finish, uh, I'm just gonna take my stainless steel texturing trowel because Marmarino has an aggregate and I'm just gonna put my base down. And really, so what my base of Marmarino is definitely really gonna do is get rid of any roller stipple I might have, any imperfection that's going to just give me an excellent base to work off of. Hear the aggregate in there? Heavy, heavy stuff. Not super heavy, let me take that back. It's just a nice medium aggregate. If you want the real heavy, I'm not going to say what you want. If you want a real heavy one, that's something totally different. I'll just confuse you and me. Okay, get a little bit more here. Now you want to be kind of conscious about your movement, meaning you want to, this is one of those where we're like building a house, crooked foundation, crooked walls, crooked roofs, crooked house, sloppy foundation with the Marmorino, sloppy finish with the Grisello. All this will pump, pop through the finish. So be aware of the movement. Too busy, your finish is gonna be real busy. So really what we're doing is traditional Grisello technique. It'll be as smooth as a glass, highly reflective mirror finish. And you use the Marmarino as your base. And a lot of, really the reason is because sometimes certain colors you might want to do multiple coats. If you put the Grisello on too thick, it's going to, uh, what do you call it? Crack, spider web. And that can lead to delamination. This prevents that. Okay, there we go. Let it dry 100%. We're going to come back and do the Grisello. All right, so our Marmorino is dry. Got a little bit of pigment in there. Won't hurt anything for this step. Uh, fine finish Venetian plaster trowel, a really good trowel for our smooth polished plasters. Grisello plaster. Grisello. Interior exterior lime based plaster. Cleans up with soap and water. Must be applied over um, a lime compatible primer or another lime plaster. Tints with lime compatible pigments, never paint. And the reason is it, uh, the lime can attack other. Uh, non-compatible pigments and mess it up and you'll lose your color. So I've tinted it to this, uh, is it Roycroft, Rycroft Brown? I believe the name of the color. So we're gonna go ahead and put our first coat of Grisello on. 100% coverage. That was my ceiling, I come across like so. Work down, here's your other wall, work up. And then we're gonna fill in. Super, super smooth and creamy stuff. Organic patterns is what you want. Oops, peeling up. 
lift it up because I had a I didn't get in I didn't put I didn't press it into the marmarino properly. I just kind of let it lay on the surface, but you can see no big deal. If it happens, you fix it. Don't panic. Just take care of it. All right. Mm -hmm. Get that junk off of there. And that's one coat. Look at that over top of that, like that. How well that covered. One coat of plaster. It's about a sixteenth inch of sixteenth of an inch thick. Okay, we're going to let this dry 100%, come back, and I think I'm going to throw an embedded stencil into this one, so we'll see what happens. See in a little bit after it's dry. All right, as you can see, I've kind of already started the stencil process to save some time, so now I'm going to just take my stencil and I'll show you how I did it. There's these little reference marks, one, two, three, four, and when you set it here, you mark, put some tape under those reference marks, mark them. And then just slide this down till it meets up to your reference marks again. And then you'll continue on with your stencil. Just like so. And what we'll do is we'll take this uh, Grisello plaster and a spatula, hold the stencil in place, and then just lightly bring it across the top and backfill inside that stencil. We're going to do that all over. The whole stencil. You don't need to pile this on real thick, okay? You just put it on just enough to cover the thickness of the stencil. And what's neat about these is you can get stencils in different thicknesses. So if you want a really heavy, heavy, heavy raised dimensional stencil, just order one that's like 10 mils thick. They actually make them up to that thickness. This one's not nearly that thick. And that's what we're trying to go for here. We don't want a real heavy pattern, or we don't want a thickness on this. We want just the look of it. And I'm not really going to, probably not going to finish every little section. I'll throw one here to even it out, but um, I'm not going to worry about the little tiny edges here and there on this little sample. It's not that big of a deal for this one. This is just representation. And then we make the big guy. All right. Let's pull that off and see what we got. Okay. So you can see there'll be should be a piece here as well. One here and a little bit here. So I'll go ahead and finish that out. And I'll be back when I'm done. Okay, as you can see, I've completed the stencil. It's all done. So now what we're going to do is bury it. Get our good Venetian trowel out. Let's load up the plaster, same plaster, Grisello tinted the same color. Nothing's changed. And let's get over top of this guy. And just put it over there. We're not going to bury it, bury it. We want to be able to see through it in the sense that as we apply it, we're going to put it on so thin and tight that we can still see our stencil, st stencil pattern. All right? And that's what we're going to do. So I'm still putting it on, and I'm making sure to uh, keep my movement clean, not to leave like any sloppy lines. Because even though that stencil is there, that raised stencil, I should say, where um, any sloppiness, any junk left laying on the surface, you're going to see it. So make sure you're, you're pulling it tight with a nice motion, finishing motion, I should say. And 
And what's nice is when we go to burnish this, we'll um, be able to, the stencil's gonna come out, it's gonna enhance the stencil even more. And then uh, the whole thing will uh, get to a nice gloss. If I did two f another coat on top of this, it'll just, more. so what happens, the more coats that I put over top of this stencil, the less this stencil is gonna be noticeable, or the less predominant it's gonna be the smoother it's going to be. I mean, it's going to look like it's really textured from your standpoint or from anybody else's standpoint. Like I always say, when you photograph these things or video them, if you don't do them from the right angle, it's hard to tell that they're actually smooth and they always look very textured. This is smooth and you'll see it when we get to the end. Almost cut myself. Got to be careful with these trials. I mean, they can go right through you so quick. So we're going to let this firm up to the uh, humid state. Actually, it's almost there. Put it on so nice and tight. It sounds like my chair needs some oil. Yeah, it's good to go, meaning I can start to burnish it, as you can tell. This is way too wet. So one of the things you can look for is if it looks like there's water or moisture on the surface of the plaster, then you know it's way too wet to get in there and do anything. Because if it's too damp, like right in here where it's super damp, I'm going to make a mess. Up here, it's setting quick, and it's really setting quick, like you can start to tell. So it's fun because I can burnish. And this is the best part about these kind of finishes. I mean, I just, embedded stents is like some of the coolest finishes out there. It's just like an old wall. I mean, an old, old, old wall. All right, so let's let this set up a little bit, come back, finish it off. Okay, 100, no, not almost 100% dry, but close to 100%. So I can just burnish it up a little bit more, and look what we're getting, all this cool, fun stuff. That stencil is really pronounced. Smooth. Watch this. See how smooth, look how shiny that is. Let's take it off of here real quick. So, you could leave this. See how smooth that is? Embedded, look at the stencil. See it? And then look. Look at that, Grisello plaster. Woohoo! See my reflection. And there's a st embedded stencil. That's how smooth you can get this. This plaster is fantastic. Now, we could leave it like this if you're happy with it. I'd like to pull the if you pull the tape off to really get you to see it, but we could also wax it. Now, it's also a good idea sometimes to do a quick test because what happens when you get these dark colors, and this is a pretty dark color, do a quick test, meaning rub it a little bit and see if anything comes off. Like when I do some of these dark finishes, like the tricorn black, there's a lot of pigment. So you see that? So, knowing that the color could come off, and I mean could come off, um, you don't want to put this somewhere in a home or in a restaurant and a lady in a really pretty white dress leans up against it and gets that, because that won't do good. We should seal it. Italian polishing wax. We'll use the clear. Now, you could leave it like this. It's totally up to you. You're in control of the finish. That's the beauty of it. I'm just making sure I'm going to point out the things that you should be aware of. All right, so I'm Italian polishing wax clear. Can be tinted if you want to tint it, or you can use one of the standard colors that it comes in. And just put it on like so. So what this will do is it's going to lock in all that color. So you don't have to worry about it bleeding off or rubbing off onto somebody's clothes. And the other thing about the wax, is that uh, if, let's say you have a commercial space or yeah, a restaurant, kitchen, something in the home. If you're in a restaurant, somebody splashes oil or red wine against it or something, it could stain it. It'll, re it'll repel the moisture. The moisture is not going to hurt it, but it could stain. I, you know, that's the thing. There's a, a great Mediterranean restaurant not too far from here, and every time you go in there, it makes you crazy because beautiful Venetian plaster. They never sealed it. 
and all the oils just stained it. It's just terrible. It's, just, it's sad. Such a beautiful plaster job, and I don't know if there's, you know, you just don't know what the whole story was. Were they trying to save a couple of bucks? They didn't want to put the fin this wax on top of it, because, you know, it's, there's so many things that can happen. All right, let's see. Where's our rag? Go in there and just polish that up. Remember, wax. You can't put it on too thick. If you put it on too thick, it can dry cloudy and hazy, and it's going to di really discolor the finish, so you've got to be careful of that. But this is just going to be nuts with this wax on top of this. And again, you can always use your big car buffer with the lamb's wool pad and whoop, just knock this out in no time flat. But on sample boards, it doesn't work too well. What happens is it'll grab the sample board and creates a suction and pulls it up. But on a big project, yeah, big wall, big car buffer. So now that color is all sealed inside of the wall. A couple spots here the wax wasn't quite ready. So when you're doing wax, the biggest thing about wax is don't let it set overnight. Wax a wall, polish a wall. Usually with, like, you can see how fast it sets up. So look at the difference. Now the wax does darken the color up about uh, 20%. See the, all the fun stuff in there? And there's my Look at that. That'd be a great wall. So that could be finished as well right there. Or you could carry on. And let's say you want to enhance it a little bit and grab the antique bronze wax. Yep. And go over top of it. There's so many things that you can do. And there's so many fun things at our disposal to use. Only limited by our imagination. Look at that. That's antique bronze wax, the Italian polishing wax. It's one of the colors that comes in. It's so cool. Okay. Now, you can see where some of this is on really heavy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and blot some of that excess out of this. That, that shows you there is a texture, but it's so fine that you can't, you can't really see it. But this trowel rides over the high spots, and it leaves it in those lows. So that just thin, thin, thin little, just that little thin layer of texture that the trowel just skits, slides right over top of. So it makes such a huge difference. And if I left that in there, it's going to turn gray and cloudy and make a big mess. So let's go here and polish this up. I'm going to polish it up, pull the tape, and I'll be right back, okay? Okay, I'm finished with it. I po finished polishing it out. I pulled the tape, and I had to change the, uh, the background of the easel because it was so sloppy. It was taken away from how pretty this is. And I, know I wanted you to be able to like, see exactly what I'm seeing. That's it, though, right there. I mean, this thing, so slick. Look at that. There's your stencil. Can you see the highlights of the antique bronze wax in there? Yeah. See how it just dances across there? Then look. That's how, but look how smooth it is. <laughs> Love it. There you go. So that is Grisello plaster with an embedded stencil. Roy Croft Brown. And, oh, just so cool. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, okay. That's it. My name's Ron Lehm, and I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops. If you go online to thefauxschool.com, you'll find out my schedule and my travel schedule around the country, and I'm also available to hire for commission projects on residential, commercial restaurants, and I've done a couple casinos, so you catch me there, too. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.